there. Okay, so how are you? Trauma bonding and shallow relationships. Today we're going to talk about um, what they have in common. So being shallow is to have like little depth you know, kind of like shallow water or having little extension inward or backward, like a dead end job. See, as I put many messages together that God has sent me over time and all the confirmations I have since, you know, put together, um, even when he sent me this homework assignment regarding this topic um, and the correlation, I took a better look at, which is a mutual relationship between two or more things or, you know, the process of establishing a connection between two or more measures. So, hence the term flesh versus spirit, right? So, he then told me specifically that Jesus, you know, as a real example, did not have to worry about what day or time it was because, uh, he works for you directly, right? Um, you know, he has God on his mind literally 24-7. So, um, you know, he is the will of God, basically, even by choice. Does not choose or did himself. We all even get that same choice, you know, to make today. Self-will or God's will. Now, Jesus breaking the commandments is not possible because, you know, love trumps law, as he has reminded me. So, you know, don't work on the Sabbath need not apply to Jesus. It is more directly for those that don't seek spirit 24-7, you know, already. They choose flesh 24-7. He says it's those that work for themselves, he keeps repeating, day and night, because they can't get enough of themselves, he says. Um, he's exaggerating and put emphasis on it. I think he's regarding or, you know, pointing at it because it's kind of a, like implying idolatry, right? So, but they can't stop and take time to worship God, is my point, even when he tries to negotiate with them by saying, hey, you know, give me one out of the seven days in a week. But they say, no, I'm not going to worship God. I am too busy worshiping themselves. (laughs) He keeps telling me. Um, You know, they don't seek God with all their hearts, certainly, in the secret place even. They don't really pray all the time for truth or even for forgiveness. This, that is red flag number one. So then do they know what day the Sabbath is? Actually, you know, what it falls and the 24 hours of it? That is red flag number two. Now, even if you were brought up in the church, are you now serving the church or God? Because you mean to tell me you never heard someone tell you that you might be a day off? When you're celebrating on a Sunday anyway? Well, at least since you say you read the Bible, even memorize scripture, then have you not come across it in a few dozen of his chapters of his book? (laughs) Um, That's red flag number three. Then they seem confused with their dead-end job, right? That they can't stop for even one day a week. Likely does not bear fruit even for the kingdom. He gave them, though, more than enough chances to try and turn it around even. Uh, Sorry. Um, You know, for the good. And those that don't, you know, it's disappointing. Um, Let them go, he tells me. Focus on yourself. Um, a shallow person anyway, um, is one who lacks depth of intellect or becoming, you know, knowledgeable at least. Likely they are concerned only with what is obvious. You know, if you describe a person, piece of work or idea as shallow, you disapprove of them because 
they don't show or involve any serious or careful thought. In addition, they are vain and untrustworthy. But what is harder to see, let alone, you know, accept, are those people, you know, the themselves ones that actually go a step further to inflict trauma even, walking right into what you are doing and come with a deliberate will, you know, an evil plan, even if you're clearly working for the kingdom, you know, and bearing fruit, that is the enemy, you know. Those who come only to kill, steal, and destroy, right? Uh, a couple of things begin to happen as a person is being abused, whether a brief attack or an ongoing, you know, stalking situation from a perpetrator. The longer the abuse occurs, the more trauma to unpack later, right? So trauma bonding is a complex bond that can form in abusive relationships where a victim feels uh, like competing emotions toward their abuser even, including positive ones. This bond can also occur in other, you know, types of relationships too. Um, you know, family members, parents, children. The trauma bond is the attachment though that is formed between two people who uh, unconsciously bond to each other based on the shared trauma, which ultimately, though, leads to a relationship, betrayal, and heartbreak. So survivors and perpetrators of domestic abuse, anyway, will often form trauma bonds, whereby they both become emotionally hooked, you know, into the relationship. This can make it extremely difficult for the survivor, you know, to unlock her or himself and escape, you know, from the abuse. So one way to determine, though, whether you are in a healthy relationship is to think about how it makes you feel. Are you supported? Is it secure? Confident even? Um, while a trauma bond makes you feel fearful, you know, anxious or put down. If you have um, experienced trauma bonds in your life, you might recognize these stages when dealing, you know, with an abuser. Love bombing, you know, trust and dependency, criticism, manipulation and gaslighting, resignation, and giving up, you know, loss of self, even addiction to the cycle. To take it even a step further, similar to trauma bond, but Stockholm Syndrome, which is a psychological condition where hostages develop uh, emotional bonds with their captors. In a trauma bond, the victim can experience similar emotions toward their abuser, now, you may be asking yourself, you know, what is the difference between uh, a trauma bond and uh, Stockholm Syndrome? Well, trauma bonding occurs in the context of an ongoing abuse or some type of, you know, mistreatment. A uh, specific relationship where Stockholm Syndrome is often associated with shorter-term hostage situations or circumstance involving a power imbalance, basically. We all know there comes a point in time when perpetrators do come to the end of themselves and get caught, you know, during or after their violent crimes and are finally arrested. You know, God says to me, um, the most, oh, the moment, I'm sorry, he said, I needed it in my experience, you know, says your heavenly father is stepping in and going to have to discipline this individual. I will take them away and get to know, well, they'll get to know me, he says. Also putting a stop, though, to what they are doing and punish them because they know the rules, can even recite them. 
but outright choose to not obey, have no desire to feel bad, even for what they are doing, or at least have done, let alone, you know, show any sign of repentance, right? And meanwhile, he says, I have a problem with that. The ongoing trauma, the drama, the damage and heartbreaking, you know, situation, the cries he hears basically from his children, the victims begging him to step in. So he does. It's good for us, you know, but all bad for them and the rest of their life even. He told me, uh, he who touches you touches the very pupil of my eye. He also keeps telling me, um, I can do anything I want, anytime I want, and I don't have to ask anyone before I do it either. <laughs> you know, that is when basically justice has arrived, right? The serious crimes involving domestic and or child abuse, you know, incest, elder abuse, exploitative employment, kidnapping or hostage situations, you know, human trafficking, religious extremists or cults even. Um, these victims, you know, though, need to be provided services that can help them to restore themselves to cope. And recover, you know, like emergency aid, you know, for food, shelter, cost, counseling, right? Which I think is um, improved uh, when it comes to therapy and either an outpatient or inpatient center, treatment center. Um, but we can always do more, right? I think one uh, is learning, right, as a survivor, to help yourself heal and then, you know, to help others. There are, however, many other people, though, that want to avoid and become knowledgeable even of how to protect themselves. It is also wonderful, you know, if you just decided to become a solution partner to the problem and work in the industry, you know, to help others. Education right, on seeing and knowing specific conditions is key. Also, knowing how a trauma bond develops with a person is critical in forming, you know, any kind of relationship, really. So a person, though, must perceive a real threat of danger from their abuser, right, or experience, obviously, at least harsh treatment with um, even if it's small periods of kindness in between, you know, but be isolated from other people and their perspectives. Or when one begins to, like, believe they cannot escape. Now, breaking a trauma bond can be challenging and may take time, but it is possible. The fresh start begins with focusing on the present. The evidence, you know, start to practice positive self-talk and uh, as well as self-care. If possible, a person can also be familiar of what an abusive or even a toxic relationship is in order to, you know, spot the signs early and reinforce that they are not healthy. So learn also, though, afterwards and hopefully as many before right of what a healthy relationship looks like seek those ones out right create a plan even to improve safety and make it possible to leave you know any situation other signs to look for if you think you might be in a trauma bond is the quick drops from the evidence stages right like love bombing but then you feel loss of self or like a commitment you make, but then it feels like it turned into isolation. You know, your awareness makes it more than possible, though, to overcome trauma bonding and develop, you know, healthy relationships, right? So seeking professional help can also be a vital step in healing and breaking that cycle of those damaging bonds, right? Uh, also, even become aware of others that have experienced, though, too, trauma. 
because they will have a, a genuine empathy, you know, towards you. They're more than desiring, you know, to want to be there, so to speak. They hear you. They validate your story and have even experienced, you know, your pain. So it's those, though, that understand you, right? The most that um, continues is that they keep showing up, actually know what you want and need, even stay by your side, right? Continuing to walk alongside you in the journey, giving you that safe companionship, right, that you desire. All right, guys, that's all for today. Hope this helps. Bye.